Alrighty, Belserius Call, the last of our ad mech models I'm going to be doing for at least a, until they come out with a bunch of new ones, which I doubt will be any time soon. Uh, before we get on to the painting, I do want to mention I was painting this in the middle of transferring to the new desk and also uh, this is when my camera completely died. I tried to use a substitute camera, uh, but it ended up with some blurry off-center uh, footage that you'll just have to deal with for this part and the next part. But uh, let's jump into it now. Starting off with our standard black primer undercoat. And over that, I am dry brushing some Vallejo Muddle Air Silver. Very lightly, but I want to cover everything. Uh, this is going to be uh, kind of the default color since there's so many tiny little bits on this model. I really want to work the color into the recesses uh, to just cover anything that at this moment I'm not sure what color it's going to be. So uh, I decided to go with metallic color uh, since that seemed to be a good default for all the little bits he has hanging off of him. Step two. That would be our ink shade. We're using my standard black and brown ink mix. Uh, black for shade, brown for uh, dirt. So I went a little bit heavier on the black than the brown in, in this case. Also added some glaze medium, just to smooth out the wash since we're putting it over such a large surface area. Uh, pools might happen, but the glaze medium will help fight the pools. Also give me a little extra working time to pull the wash off of any areas where it collected where I don't want it to collect. But we're giving all those metal bits a nice good wash now. With the wash completely dry, we go back with our silver once again and uh, rebrush some of the highlights on any areas where some extra highlighting is needed. Perhaps the uh, wash dried a bit too dark or I just want to pick out uh, some areas for additional highlighting. Uh, again, I'm kind of doing a lot of areas here, more than I would need necessarily need by the end of this project, but uh, right now I have no idea what is going to be painted what color, especially when it comes to all the metal bits. Because this is a special character, it's going to be a centerpiece of the army, we're going to put more effort into it than we did with the rank and file troops. That means adding additional contrast, more layers of paint, thinner layers of paint. Uh, beginning with, I have a mix of Vallejo model color Iraqi sand, and that's darkened with a little bit of game color earth. On the rank and file, I just use Iraqi sand and then later I put a wash on it, but uh, I want to hand paint everything here. Something else I'm doing a little bit differently. My main color on my Admec has been blue, green with white accents. And I decided to try reversing it here. Uh, the robe is the largest surface area on this model. So uh, by default, that should be blue, green. But again, because this is a special model and I wanted to stand out a little bit more, little bit more I'm gonna reverse the colors. So white, off-white for the robes, and then we'll do the armor plates blue. Now we move on to Iraqi sand, and again, because a uh, special character here, uh, paint is much thinner than it normally would be, and I'm just slowly building up the colors uh, to, to begin our paint job. This is uh, just the starting points here. We got a lot more layers to add. Uh, again, the paint is much thinner, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just let the video play out in a few areas longer than I normally would. Normally, I just cut the video when I'm done saying things, but uh, just to give you an idea how many brush strokes we're talking about, I'm going to let these segments play out a little bit longer than normal. Uh, just to give you an idea, the layers, how many are applied. You can see right now I'm going over. This isn't just a single layer here. Well, it is a single layer here, but... I'm going to go over the same areas repeated times, letting it dry, working my way around the miniature, uh, and going over each area about three, four times, depending on the exact thinness uh, and exactly which layer we are applying at that point.
So the Iraqi Sand and the Iraqi Sand Earth Mix, that was uh, shade layers. Now we're going to start working on uh, what I call the base coat. Uh, terminology differs. I refer to the base coat whatever being the medium color between the highlights and the shades. Other people just call the base coat the first color. Just making that point clear, but we have Iraqi Sand and Pale Sand mixed together now. Again, paint's very thin because I want to slowly build up layers and that'll ensure that we don't have any dry, or excuse me, uh, brush marks between those coats. So uh, it's a long process. I'm taking my time because this is the last figure of the bunch. I can afford to do that. I don't have five of these or 10 or 20 of them to paint. more pale sand added to the previous mix now and again just repeating the process slowly building up those layers with very thin layers of paint on my rank and file i believe i did let me think here um three layers plus a wash i believe a rocky sand the pale sand a rocky sand mix and then pale sand on very rare occasion a little bit of white uh, and then a little bit of a weathering uh, compared to this where we got oh, at least three more layers uh, and the paint's much thinner so the process is taking a lot longer but the uh, transition is going to be much smoother. We have now made it to straight pale sand. Yay! You can see we're putting this highlight on much smaller area. That's always what we want to do with highlights. Work our way up towards the, uh, the tips of the folds. Uh, fairly easy painting this robe here because it has a lot of nice folded material. It's easy to figure out exactly where the highlight sh highlights should go. And again, if this was a rank and file, I'd probably be done after this step. But uh, we're going to go a little bit farther, add more contrast, and that will make the model stand out more on the battlefield or sitting in a dark cabinet somewhere. So this is normally what would be our last step, the edging. Uh, I have white mixed in with the pale sand now and just picking out the uh, edges of the robes, picking out a few of the, the rips. There's a whole lot of little rips and holes in uh, the robe here and any other areas where uh, I think light would catch. Uh, just to bring out those folds. Uh, the paint here is a little bit thicker than what we used previously since we're working on the very edge and to get a sharp edge uh, we do want the paint uh, to be a little bit thicker. Even I thought the model was done at this point, but I decided to go back with pure white and still pick out a few of the rips. Uh, and there's actually a lot of rips in the robes. Uh, just want to pick out the edge, or the bottom edge at least, because uh, those are eventually going to be shaded with a very dark color, dark brown or black. And having that very dark color and that very light white color right next to each other. Uh, it's going to help make those rips actually show. Uh, if I just didn't over highlight it at this point, uh, they wouldn't pop as much uh, by the time we get to the end of the project. So you might have thought we were done with the row, but no, we are not. Now that I had all the colors established, I decided to go back and add a little bit more shade. And for that, I'm using Vallejo Model Color Flat Earth. 
uh, mixed with a heavy amount of flow aid. Uh, the flow aid's gonna slow down the drying time of the paint, and it's also gonna make it, uh, if it makes sense, make it transparent without making it too watery. Uh, but I can put it on and then slowly feather it into the uh, surrounding areas and also clean up any mistakes in some of these uh, areas where I'm painting it right now are very, very narrow gaps. So I can apply it in there and swirl it around, move it around until I'm satisfied with it. I'm just trying to get a little bit more shade in some of the deeper recessed areas. Finally, on to the armor. Uh, like I said, I want to add more contrast to this miniature. Normally, uh, I for the rank and file, I would have started at this point. I have model color blue-green mixed with game color verdigris, but I'm actually applying that over a uh, base coat or undercoat of Leho model color, just straight blue-green, because I want to get uh, a bit more color transition into this project. So. Um, it's a very just small step, but we will add to it with even darker colors a little bit later on. More verdigris added to the mix now, and these plates, uh, they don't have a lot of um, contrast to them. There's not a bunch of deep recesses. Uh, even though they're rounded, they're kind of just a smooth, roundish shape, kind of like a turtle shell, so there's not like any deep recesses to put any dark colors in really. So uh, most of the highlights colors are going over a uh, rather wide portion of the plates. Uh, the shade areas are going to be uh, where those little lips and where the plates overlap one another. That's where we're going to get our contrast on this project. Uh, I just remember one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, one thing I'm really bad at is figuring out if I should assemble a model before painting. I tend to put it all together and then realize, shoot, I should have left this off before painting. A uh, perfect example on this project. This guy's a little pain in the ass. He's got bits everywhere, and it's really hard getting into those deep recesses with a brush once he's all put together. So if you are following along at home, I would consider leaving some, if not all, the arms off, and also maybe perhaps leaving the entire top torso off while you're painting this. Uh, it would be a heck of a lot easier. You know what, you may not even want to attach him to the base because he does have some little legs and tubes underneath his robes. If you're fanatical, you may want to paint those. Uh, even I didn't though, but I want to leave that up to you and just give you the fair warning. So we have finally worked our way up to straight verdigris, and this is, again, where I would normally stop on a rank and file, but we have another couple steps after this one. Uh, you can see there's not a lot of huge color transition here. I'm just trying to work these highlights uh, kind of away from the sides of the plates, how they curve off to the sides, work, and just work them towards the, uh, the top. Uh, that's my method of highlighting and shading. Some people were, could add a hell of a lot more contrast, like to the front and back of the plates on top, go really dark colors there and have a really bright color in the center, uh, which you can do if you prefer that style. It's just not my style, and it's not the way I paint. I try to figure how I learned to paint logically. Top of a car, it's going to be bright, you know, all the way across the hood or the trunk. So that's my thinking here. But uh, again, if you want to add a bit more shade, you can be a bit more creative, a bit more uh, artistic style and uh, add a bit more contrast, darker areas on some of the plates where even sunlight would hit, theoretically at least. So next we have verdigree mixed with a little game color steel gray. Normally I would call this the edging color, but you know what, we have no edges to paint them on because all the edges have uh, this trim that we're going to paint later. So uh, this is just an extra highlight 
area, I'm trying to mostly pick out the areas right next to where the trim and the plates uh, override each other, so where, they, where they're uh, layered. So this highlight is going to go right next to a deep, deep color, dark color recessed area, and that's really going to make all those plates and those recess areas really pop once we get those shaded. And speaking of shade, here's another step that I'm adding to this miniature and not the rank and file. We have model color turquoise mixed with game color black ink and a little bit of glaze medium. And I'm just putting this color over all the areas where the trim is going to go. So I have a nice sharp line and I can easily make that trim stand out with whatever color I choose to paint it. Uh, really important to work this into all the overlapping plates so this color ends up right next to that uh, super high highlight edge highlight that we added uh, because that's really going to make everything pop. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and keep everything else for part two. Should have that done in a few days, but uh, in the meantime, hope you enjoyed this part and we'll finish up in a little bit. All right, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Thank you.